Now let's think about functions as equations. Let's look at the example y equals 2x plus 3. So this is a machine that changes one input number into an output number. The input numbers are called x. And what this machine is telling us is that we multiply x by 2 and then add 3 and we'll call the resulting output number y. Here's some examples. If the input is 0, let's put 0 into our equation. 2 times 0 is 0 plus 3 is 3. So y equals 3 when x is 0. One way to write this is using something called an xy pair. We write the first number, the input, is the x, 0 in this case, comma, the output, which is 3. And then we put both the numbers inside some parentheses. Let's do another example. Input x equals 1, output. Let's look at our equation. 2 times 1 comes to 2, plus 3 comes to 5. If the input is 2. Let's look at our equation. 2 times 2 comes to 4, plus 3 is 7. So the output here is 7. And also in our xy pair, 7. Let's go the other way. Let's try and figure out what the input was when we got an output of 9. See if we can figure it out from the table. Looks like the output increases by 2 each time the input increases by 1. So by just observing the pattern, we should be able to see that this input must be 3. Let's check that that's correct by plugging 3 into our equation. Equations up here, 2 times 3 comes to 6, plus 3 comes to 9. Yes, it's correct. Okay, what if we were given a table of inputs and outputs and we were told that there's a linear equation kind of at the same form as this. So in other words, a number times x plus another number. Could we guess that equation just by knowing some inputs and outputs? Well, let's see if we can figure it out. We're told for an input of one, we get an output of two. An input of 2, we get an output of 5. An input of 3, we get an output of 8. So each time the input goes up by 1, the output is going up by 3. This is called the slope of the linear equation. So in this case, the slope is 3. And this is the number that multiplies x in our function. You can see that up here, the two was how much the output increased when the input increased by one. The answer was two. So if I write the equation of the lower table, our output is going up by 3 each time the input is going up by 1, so the slope is 3. So that means in front of the x will be the number 3. How about the other number in the equation, this piece? What does that represent? Well, if I look at the input of 0, that had an output of 3. And that's what this number is. It's the output when the input is zero. Okay, let's look at our table down here. We don't have an input of zero, but we could use the pattern that we noticed before to figure out what the input 
should be. Sorry, the output, what the output should be when the input is zero. Okay, because we're changing by three each time. So presumably, if our input goes down to zero, our output will go down another three to minus one. So our output will decrease by the slope when the input goes down from one to zero and the input was, was two when the input was one, sorry, the output was two when the input was one. So if the input goes down to zero, the output will go down by three to minus one. And this is known as the y-intercept. It's the value of y when the input is zero. And it's the number in the equation right here. The reason I've written these xy pairs in the table is because we can represent linear functions like this on graphs. And that can help us understand what the slope and the intercept is. So let's look at functions as graphs. Here's the graph for the first table. So the way to construct the graph is to draw a horizontal axis, which will be the x-axis, a vertical axis, which will be the y-axis. And then for each xy pair, you find where it comes on the graph, and then you join up the points, there's gonna be four points with a straight line. So when x is zero, y is three, that's this point. When x is one, y is five, that's this point. X equals two, y is seven, x equals three, y is nine. And all those points lie along a straight line, and the equation of that line is y equals two x plus three. This line has a slope of two. Each time x goes up by one, y goes up by two. That's the slope. And then the y-intercept is the value of y when x is zero. When x is zero, y is three. Let's look at the second table, see what the graph looks like. So I drew this graph using Excel, which is kind of handy dandy for this kind of thing. The point one, two is x equals one, y equals two, this one here. Two, five, x equals two, y equals five, and x equals three, y equals eight. And then I've added on the one we calculated, x equals zero, y equals minus one. The slope, as x goes up by one, y goes up by three. The y-intercept, when x equals zero, y equals minus one. So the equation of this line is y equals three x minus one. Here's a couple of questions to answer. First question is a guess the linear equation question. Here's my inputs and outputs. An input of one gives an output of six, an input of two gives an output of 10, input of three gives an output of 14. It's a linear function. What is the equation of this function in this form? Y equals mx plus b. M is gonna be the slope. So you need to figure out what number m is equal to. And then b is the y-intercept. You need to figure out what number b is equal to and then write that equation down, y equals whatever number you figure out for m times x, plus whatever number you figure out for the y-intercept for b. Second question is a word problem. Suppose we're traveling in a car at a rate of 60 kilometers an hour. The distance traveled in kilometers, which we'll call d, is a linear function of the rate, 60, and the time in hours, which we'll call t. For example, after t equals one hour, we've traveled d equals 60 kilometers. And I've put that on this graph here. 
when t, t is on the horizontal axis, t is one, y is 60. Sorry, d is 60, <laughs> d is on the vertical axis. After t equals two hours, we've traveled d equals 120 kilometers, and after t equals three hours, we've traveled 180 kilometers. What is the equation of this function representing this line here? It's gonna have t in it, it's gonna have d in it, and it's gonna have one or two numbers. 